The financial crisis of 2008 and the subsequent decline in housing values from 2006 right through to 2012 serves as a somber reminder of the dangers of a speculative real estate market fueled by irresponsible lending practices. But even with the not so distant memories of the bubble era behind us, you won't believe the move that Warren Buffett just made. And you also won't believe just how bad the storm that's brewing in the US real estate market is. But before we get into that, it's important that we understand the bubble era. This was the era leading up to 2006 where housing prices inflated. Lending practices were loose, and pretty much anybody could get any amount of mortgages that they wanted. It was widely believed that housing prices would continue to go one direction and one direction only, and that was up. But at the 2006 Berkshire Hathaway Annual General Meeting, Warren Buffett sounded the alarm on the risky lending. Buffett suggested that the day traders of the internet moved into trading condos, and that kind of speculation can produce a market that can move in a big way. And he wasn't suggesting that it would move in a positive direction. Before many even realized that the bubble existed, he was sounding the alarm. He said, I would be surprised if there aren't some significant downward adjustments, especially in the higher end of the housing market. And as we all know, within about 18 months, this prediction came to fruition. Munger at that same meeting added, there's a lot of ridiculous credit being extended in the US housing sector. Buffett went on to say, dumb lending always has its consequences. It's like a disease that doesn't manifest itself for weeks, like an epidemic that doesn't show up until it's too late to stop. And eventually that lending disease led to an epidemic. Now, how does that relate to today? Well, in recent years, there's been a gradual run up in prices, interrupted, of course, by the pandemic, only to see prices across North America surge. However, one could argue that the incline was not quite as steep. Nonetheless, many sophisticated investors are sounding the alarms once again, suggesting that we could again be in bubble territory. But this time, they aren't necessarily sounding the alarm on the residential real estate market. No. This time, the storm is brewing in the commercial real estate sector. But before I tell you all about that storm, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button so more people like you can see this video. It really helps me grow the channel. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate each and every person that subscribes, so thanks in advance. At the 2023 Berkshire Hathaway Annual General Meeting, Buffett and Munger were asked the following question. The first sentence of a recent Financial Times article read, Charlie Munger has warned of a brewing storm in the US commercial property market with American banks full of what he said were bad loans. Please elaborate on what's going on in commercial real estate, how bad will the losses be, and what sectors or geographies look particularly bad. Munger responded with the following. I do think that the hollowing out of the downtowns in the United States and elsewhere in the world is going to be quite significant and quite unpleasant. This is him referring to low vacancies in commercial real estate properties, specifically in office spaces. He went on to say, I think the country will get through it all right, but as they say, it will often involve a different set of owners. Warren Buffett chimed in and said, yeah, and the buildings don't go away, but Munger responded, the owners do, signaling that highly leveraged commercial real estate owners will likely begin defaulting on their loans, and subsequently, banks will be taking over those properties and selling them to new owners. And herein lies the problem with commercial real estate. Companies that buy commercial real estate tend to borrow as much as they can without providing personal guarantees. And what that means is in general, when the commercial real estate market turns, borrowers are significantly quicker to hand back the keys to a property than a homeowner would be. When a homeowner turns back the keys to a property, they no longer have a place to live. When a sophisticated commercial real estate investor hands back the keys to a property, they're simply ridding themselves of a bad investment. For them, it's nothing more than a business decision. And ultimately, that means when borrowers default, the banks end up with the properties. As mortgages that were taken out at 2.5% come up for renewal, investors are starting to realize that the current economic situation no longer warrants the profitability of the building. And as the payments increase, while at the same time rents are decreasing due to lower vacancies, the values of the buildings are declining substantially, putting many of those investors in positions where they own properties that are no longer worth what they owe. And I'll get to a good example of that in a second. But when a property is no longer worth what somebody owes, and there's no longer enough income coming in in order to support the mortgage payments, that's pretty much a recipe for disaster and ultimately a default on a loan. And ironically, earlier this year, Brookfield Corp, one of the biggest real estate investment companies in the world, decided to default on two of its LA properties. And this would normally start foreclosure proceedings. But what's interesting is that the lender at the time took no action. The lenders wanted the property no more than Brookfield did. And that is largely because of the significant cost to maintain those buildings relative to the significantly depleted values of the assets. And with the significant portion of the properties being vacant, there was no revenue coming in to support the cost to own it. Now, ultimately, these properties were turned back to the mortgage-backed security holders. These were the companies that had bought the loans from the original lender. 
And just recently, the MBS bondholders who now have this asset that's not worth anywhere close to what they thought it should be worth, just declined a lease offer from the city of LA, primarily because they didn't believe that the rents were high enough. And this was the only lease option they had. Nobody else is looking to lease in these buildings, which means they chose to keep the building pretty much empty instead of taking the only lease offer that they had, which is a pretty clear indicator that there's a detachment between the expectations of real estate investors from the actual realities of what's happening in the commercial real estate market. Oh, and by the way, the value of this property in 2021 was $632 million, and today it's valued at only $270 million meaning it has lost more than half of its value. The loan that Brookfield defaulted on was $465 million, significantly more than the fair market value of that property today. And this scenario is playing out all over the US. And this is largely due to the shift towards hybrid work. As a result, office attendance is now 30% below pre-pandemic norms, leading to a 20% reduction in office space demand. And what's really scary is that some forecasts are showing that by 2030, office space demand could reduce by as much as 38%. Needless to say, the commercial real estate sector is in big trouble. But the question is, is the residential real estate sector in the same danger? And the short answer is no. Obviously, there's the fear that the current housing market is being driven by speculation and investors and all the things that led to the 2008 collapse. But you have to keep in mind that the penny stock trading mentality of 2006-2007 is not the same as it once was, nor are the risky or fraudulent lending practices. Yes, there's been a run up in prices similar to those prior to 2008, but the lending practices have changed drastically with not just more stringent US rules, but more stringent international rules when it comes to lending. And one must remember that the 2008 meltdown in the residential real estate market was in fact the 2008 financial crisis. And that crisis was caused primarily by loose lending practices, practices that no longer exist today. And while in 2006, Buffett was an outspoken critic of risky lending practices and speculative behavior, today there is significantly more to the housing market story, which has led Buffett to make a pretty big bet in the US housing market. New home construction has slowed to its slowest pace since 1995. And while 12.3 million new American households have been formed, only 7 million new single family homes have been built. In order for builders to catch up, they would need to more than double the pace of building in the next five to six years. Now keep that in mind when I get to the end and I tell you what Buffett did. So even in the event that there were a pause or a minor correction to the US real estate market, it would likely be short lived. And barring an outlier economic event like the Lehman Brothers collapse, the rapid decline and domino effect that happened in the US housing market in 2008 is likely not going to happen again, or at the very least, it seems unlikely. That being said, though, there has been an increase in investor activity and a significant decline in housing prices. And at the same time, a significant decline in rents could cause real estate investors to offload properties. And the offloading of those properties could lead to more weakness in housing prices. But you have to remember, there's still not enough houses to go around, which means rents should remain high. And if rents remain high, even if investors start to lose equity, they could be inclined to hold on to properties for longer if the rents are still paying the mortgage payments. And on top of that, the lending practices that are in place today will provide a significantly bigger cushion than those risky ones of 2006 and 2007. But even in the face of higher interest rates, higher investment activities, and a situation that seems to be pretty comparable to the bubble leading up to 2008, Buffett just made a pretty significant investment in, get this, US home builders. So the question is, what's different today than back then, and why would Buffett make this investment? Well, simply put, the storm that's brewing in the US real estate market is a commercial storm, not a residential storm. And while housing prices have increased, there is a significant set of fundamentals that will continue to support the US housing market. The most significant of those being the shortage of houses available. And when there's a shortage of houses available, there's always going to be upward pressure on the real estate market. There may be economic events that in the short term provide a correction to real estate values, but barring a whole bunch of people leaving the US real estate market completely, there is going to be support for housing prices. And this suggests that there's significant reason to think that home builders are going to be very profitable in the next five to 10 years, especially as more and more of those needed houses start to come online. In fact, they'll probably fare very well, at least over the long term, even if there are short term declines in prices. So what does that mean for potential home buyers? Well, it means that if you're buying with the long term in mind, you like Warren Buffett can probably feel pretty confident in US housing prices. And if you already own a home, 
even if there is a reduction in home values in the next year or two over the long term, again, a 10, 15, 20 year horizon, you'll probably be happier owning a home than not owning one. But that's only if you're in a situation where you can afford the home you live in, you have access to emergency funds, and you aren't living paycheck to paycheck. If you are in a situation where you cannot afford your home, it's probably time to think about at the very least downsizing into something that's more affordable. Oh, and if you want to see more details about the $700 million plus investment that Warren Buffett just made in the US housing sector, make sure you check out this video right here.